Wake up, sheeple. There's a conspiracy happening right under our noses. A conspiracy being perpetrated by the Big Harmony corporations. See, Big Harma, they don't want to share all the good transitional chords. Oh, they'll give us the one and they'll give us the four. They'll give us the six. Heck, they might even give us the five. They won't give us this, or this, not even this. There's too much money at stake. Well, here at Open Studio, we're not going to be a part of their system anymore. That's why today, we're talking about the Juicy Transition Chords. My name is Adam Manis, and we are talking about the Juicy Transition Chords. We're really talking about going from one diatonic chord to another diatonic chord and using a different transition chord in between. It's super fun and super helpful and super functional when we're playing literally any song from literally any genre. We can add a lot of spice using these Juicy Transitional Chords. For use, we're sponsored by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com to find out more about all of this. There is a PDF for this video. You're gonna wanna download that as it has all of the examples and the exercises, uh, plus the real world tune examples that we're gonna be using for each one of these. You don't wanna miss that. Check out the description below. So today we're really gonna be playing some ear training games. We're gonna be going from one diatonic seventh chord to another. So in the key of B flat, which is what we'll be in, we'll go from say B flat to the two chord C minor seven. However, we are gonna throw in some juicy transition chords. From the B flat to the C minor, we can throw in the secondary dominant, we can throw in the tritone sub, and then one more surprise chord at the end that I think you're gonna like a lot. It's a Juicy Lucy. Before we start the ear training, let's just establish what a diatonic chord is. In the key of B flat, we take the B flat major scale, and we just skip a note we get a lovely B flat major seven chord. If we move all four of these notes up the B flat major scale, we get the two chord, the C minor seven. We call this the two because it's built off the second degree of that major scale. If we move that up, we get the three chord, D, F, A, and C, right? If we move that up, we get the four chord in the, B, in the key of B flat, that's E flat major seven. If we move that up, we get the five chord, F seven. If we move that up, we get the six chord, G minor seven. And finally, if we move those four notes up, we get the seven chord, A minor seven flat five. So these chords are so crucial to know in every single key. You should be able to recognize a two chord, a six chord, a four chord, a five chord in every key uh, pretty quickly if you wanna be able to navigate most music. This is sort of the, the building blocks of that. Now, our first juicy transition chord is the secondary dominant. A secondary dominant is literally putting a dominant chord before any chord, really, but especially here, these diatonic chords. So here's the difference between having this juicy transition chord and not having the juicy transition chord. If we go from the one, B flat major, to the six, right? That's beautiful, and maybe that's what the tune calls for. Uh, but as improvisers, right, as, as, as we're improvising this harmony, we could throw in the dominant chord to the G7, this is a secondary dominant. This isn't in the key of B flat at all, right? It's a D7 going to a G minor, right? It's the five of G minor, the dominant seventh of the five of G minor, right? The, the D is a fifth above the G. It creates that lovely tension and release. So we can throw that in and we get this gorgeous sound. A quick exercise to hear all of this in the key of B flat. If we look at this graphic here, you see that every other chord, starting with the B flat and skipping a chord, every one is one of our diatonic seventh chords, right? You got B flat major, and if we skip to the third chord, C minor seven, skip a chord, you have D minor seven. We're just going up, right? We're not gonna deal with the seven chord, the A half diminished, the A minor seven flat five. It's a little too complicated for our purposes today, so we're just gonna ignore it, and we're gonna have to live with that. Okay, so check this out though. We can throw in a secondary dominant before each one of these diatonic seventh chords. Right, G7 is the five chord of what? C minor seven. 
A7 is the 5 chord of what? D minor 7. B flat 7 is the 5 chord of E flat major 7. C7 is the 5 chord of F7. D7 is the 5 chord of G minor 7. And F7, as we go back, is the 5 chord of the 1. Now, notice I'm not labeling these like flat 9 or minor 11 or whatever. Those are all hinge notes, right? We're just talking about the very bare bones pillars of these harmonies. But notice how each one of these sound just beautiful as an exercise going up the scale of our diatonic sevenths, right? Giving ourselves an opportunity to create a dominant chord on all these major pillars of harmony in the key of B flat. Now, this can have a lot of cool practical purposes, and a lot of composers use things like uh, secondary dominance to create tension in songs. So this is Stevie Wonder's classic uh, as from Songs in the Key of Life. And it's really just the first two bars are really just a one to the four, right? And if we played it just like that, it would sound like this. Fine, but it's kind of boring. Stevie Wonder, however, the harmonic genius that he is, he, uh, halfway through that first bar, he takes the tonic here, which in this case is a B flat major seven, and he turns it into a dominant. As soon as this becomes a B7, it's now a secondary dominant going to the four, right? So it adds this layer of tension, this voice leading to the four. And it makes such a huge difference in the tune. It's so gorgeous. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. In the key of B flat, I'm gonna play a B flat major seven. And I'm gonna play two more chords. We're gonna have a target chord at the very end Let's say it's this chord. And then we're gonna have a juicy transition using a secondary dominant getting there. So can you hear the secondary dominant and then the diatonic seventh that we're going to, right? We're just going between two diatonic sevenths with this transition chord between. And the transition chord is a secondary dominant. Can you hear it? I'll play it one more time. First chord is B flat major seven. What are the next two chords? So this is just like Stevie's as, B flat major seven, B flat dominant seven. That's a secondary dominant going to the four chord, E flat major. How about this one? We'll do two more. Here's our one chord, B flat. Can you hear where this is going? So we're going from one diatonic seventh chord in the key of B flat to another using a transition chord, a secondary dominant. Listen to the root movement. Rachmaninoff-esque there. So this one, here's our one chord, B flat major seven, A seven to the three chord, D minor seven. Let's do one more. How about this? Here's our one chord, B flat major. It's a pretty one. Let's try it again. Here's our B flat major. Can you hear the next two chords? One more time. So this is pretty basic Bob right here. Here's our one. Then we're gonna go the five of five. C dominant seven. That's a secondary dominant going to our five chord, F7. Okay, the next way that we can get from one diatonic seventh chord to another is using the tritone sub of the secondary dominant. Now uh, this is a specific tritone sub where we're really just approaching our target chord from a half step above with a dominant chord, right? So uh, it's also the tritone sub of the secondary dominant. What does that mean? So remember our B flat major seven to D seven to G minor seven, right? The D seven has the same third and seven tritone as the dominant chord, a tritone away, A flat seven. D7 and A flat seven are related in that regard. So instead of D7 to G minor, like our first example, we can play B flat major seven, A flat seven to G minor seven. Now, the easy way to remember this is that we're just a half step up 
from our target with a dominant chord. That's it. Just play a dominant chord a half step up from your target, land on your target, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Sounds great. Listen to that. The difference here is just one diatonic sevenths to the next. Right, the one to the six, and here's with a little uh, juicy transition. Beautiful. It gives us such great voice leading opportunities. Ooh, it's so pretty. It is so pretty. And check out what we can do with the tritone sub. Uh, here's Autumn Leaves by the great uh, Joseph Cosma. J Cos, as I call him. Here's just the normal harmony of this. Now, by adding some of these tritone substitutions, some of these juicy transition chords, we get so much tension and movement. A lot of musicians will play this, something like this, right? You can actually keep going. But uh, adding these transition chords, notice that we're a half step up from each target, right? From C minor seven, G flat seven, that's like a tritone sub from a, a secondary dominant to F, which would be the C seven, the tritone is G flat. But it's just really a half step above. And then a half step above our next target, B flat major, is B seven. Now notice I'm just designing the chords, you know, the extensions of the chords based on how good they sound. So this B seven here, you know, we got the flat 13 in the melody, put a little sharp nine there. Sounds great to me. So check that out one more time. juicy. And just as before, we can walk up our diatonic seventh chords by using some tritones as the transitions. This little exercise, again, is so handy. Instead of the secondary dominance, we do the tritone subs. How great is that? Oof. Talk about juicy one more time. Gorgeous. Okay, let's do that same ear training exercise. I'm gonna start on the one chord, B flat. I'm gonna take my keyboard off and I'm gonna to go to just another diatonic seventh chord, but this time I'm gonna transition using the tritone sub. We'll do three examples. See if you can hear where we're going and how we get there. Here it is again. Listen to the root movement. Last time. Here we're going from B flat major seven. We're gonna to go to the two chord. We're gonna get there with the tritone sub, D flat seven. Beautiful, eh? Let's do a couple more. Here's our B flat seven. What's going on here? Here's our one, B flat seven. Beautiful, one more time, listen. Got it? So here we're going to the sixth chord using the tritone sub A flat seven. I used a little A flat seven sus, a big thick G flat over A flat. It's a dominant chord for sure. Let's do one more. How about this? That's pretty. That's something that Big Harmon definitely doesn't want you to have. One more time. Can you hear it? So check it out. The most common progression. One to the four. Using that half step above tritone sub to get there. Again, you know, so useful. Even if you were just playing, you know, something simple as like something, a pop song even from one to four using that tritone sub as a way to sort of mix it up can be so handy. If this kind of stuff is your jam, why not hit the like button? If this is your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel. We appreciate all the subs we can get. All right, let's get back to it. Our final juicy transition is a Juicy Lucy. Shout out to Prince. <laughs>
<laughs> and shout out to Steely Dan. This is the Moo Major chord. Uh, it's really just a major triad with the added two over the third. You know, that old chestnut. Uh, but no, seriously, again, we're going to use uh, our one to six chord progression here. Right? That's just diatonic. Sounds pretty good. But we could add this moo chord. I'm not sure why it's called the moo. I don't think anybody is. But really, all it is is a major triad over the third. So remember, we went to originally D7 to get to our G minor. Well, instead of just straight up D7 or its tritone sub A flat 7, we could do D over F. Now, you don't want to double the third. Uh, if the third is in the bass, that's like classic mistake <laughs> uh, for for voicing. It really just cancels out some really rich uh, tones in the chord, and so we don't want to play the third in the chord itself. But what sounds great in the th besides the third is the two. We already have the third in the bass. We do not need it up here in the chord. So adding that two, I got the five doubled. Five sounds good. Five's not in the bass. That is nice, right? So again, it's really just acting as a 5-1, the 5 of G minor 7, just with that third of the 5, F sharp, in the bass. And that moo is such a specific, you know, it's a very modern sounding transition. Isn't that beautiful? It's a great way to get from one to the other. And like all of our juicy transitions, we can actually practice this using our diatonic seventh scale, right? So if we go up the scale, but we add our little moo chord, and you're gonna love this, watch this. Now you might notice something about the moo chord. You notice anything about it? Where does it come from? It comes from right below our target. So it's the root is a half step below its target. If our target is C minor seven, the root is B, right? Which is the third of G, add two. So I have these in these little inversions here, right? We have the the root, the fifth, and the two in the right hand, and the third of the chord in the left hand. Isn't that beautiful? How pretty is that? You know what I'm saying? Little Deacon Blues. Thank you, uh, Steely Dan. Okay, so let's just play this really quick. Listen to that. Again, just going up the diatonic seventh chords. I mean, we're skipping the A, half diminished because we are. Anyway, so, so beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can do the same thing. Here's our one, B flat major seven. Tell me where it's going, and I'm gonna use a moo chord to get there. So see if you can identify the moo. You might just call it um, X moo, right? One more time. So here we have B flat major seven, the G mu chord, right? Which is really G add two over B, going to C minor seven, the two chord. How great is that? This works so well. How about this one? It's great, again. So here we have B flat major, the D moo chord, or D add two over F sharp, which is just a mouthful. I like to say D moo. Fun, D moo. So the G minor seven, the sixth chord. Let's do one more. It's a great dominant chord, the moo chord. So much interesting voice leading happening with it. One more time. What is this one? So this is one to three with the moo as the juicy transition. Okay, let's do one more ear training exercise. For this one, I'm gonna tell you what the progression that we're doing is. You're gonna have that. We're gonna do a one, six, two, five. B flat major, G minor seven, C minor seven, F seven. Super common chord progression. Uh, all you have to do 
is tell me what are the juicy transition chords that we're using. Is it a secondary dominant? Is it a moo chord? Is it a tritone sub? I'm gonna try to switch it up. You're gonna try to guess. A good time will be had by all. We're gonna get over on Big Harma. Here we go. This is 1625. Just B flat major seven, G minor seven, C minor seven, F seven. You just have to recognize the transition course. It's juicy, super juice. Okay, here we go. I'm feeling good. Here we go. Let's do it again. time. One more time for real. I mean, that's just a one, six, two, five, and it sounds freaking ridiculously good, right? That's what these chords can do. That was a mixture of all three. So here we have B flat major seven. We had a moo chord, D moo, right? D add two over F sharp, going to our six chord, G minor seven, just diatonic six chord. Then you had a tritone sub, D flat seven, we've got the sharp 11 on top, to our two chord, C minor seven, C minor 11. And then we turn that into a five of five, C seven, to an F7 sus, but still an F7. And we did a tritone sub. So that was a diatonic, or sorry, that was a, a secondary dominant, right? The C7, secondary dominant to the five chord, five of five. And that F7 sus to a B7, sharp nine flat 13, back to the one. So B flat major, D mu, G minor seven, D flat seven, G minor seven, sorry, C minor seven, C7, F7 sus, B7. Till next time, happy practicing.